It seems we're at the point where I have to show people that the Bible did not start with the autochthonous American, that it was brought here. Although there are many connections between the autochthonous American and many of the old world civilizations, such as the ancient Egyptians, the Chaldeans, the Mesopotamians, even the Hebrews or Phoenicians, whatever you want to call them, as I will show you later in this video, that does not mean that the American Indian were Hebrew or Israelites. Let's start off by seeing if there's any connection in the languages between the American Indian and those of ancient Egypt, Mesopotamia, or the so-called Hebrews. Didn't speak any English, but saw that I was perplexed. He said, come here. This then was boarded up with just a wooden door and it was latched there. He threw away the wooden slabs, opened the door and he said, look up. And that is the key. Took a picture in 1997, sent it to Mayan gatekeeper Hanbat's men. He said he recognizes this as the language of the Itza people, where is Chichen Itza. He said it's an ancient language. But a lot of people not sure about Humboldt's men. So we went one step further. In 2010, I got to meet Dan Alejandro Sul Ojraj. He is the wisdom keeper, the head of the Quiche Maya of all of Guatemala. I showed him this picture and his eyes went as big as saucers. And he said to me, that is the language of my ancestors. That is a calendar. That is telling the date of when Maya was here. And how we can't read it, he can't even still read it, but he knows that the circles and squares and different colors and ranges and the spokes in the wheel are indications of a date. So, this has never been discussed by any Egyptologist. What you just saw was a video of a Mayan calendar in Egypt. Also, before I go into any book, I want to show you that the Ankh, the so-called Egyptian Ankh, can be found here in the Americas. The first book we're going to look into is Mysteries of Ancient South America by Harold T. Wilkins. Other inscribed stones, almost obliterated after thousands of years, have been found in these unknown jungles of Brazil and purport that Phoenicians and their kinsmen, the Carthaginians, also wandered this way thousands of years ago, trading and hunting valuable mineral loads. Before my reader scouts the idea of these revelations of antique civilizations in South America, he or she must remember that more than 2,000 photographs of these ancient petroglyphs have been made by fraught and native prehistorians in Brazilian wilds, and that the inscriptions range from hieroglyphic, demotic, or hieratic forms to cuneiform or proto-Phoenician forms, such as, have we, such as have been found in caves in the Canary Islands or are codified in Genesis. That whatever that is, it's Latin. And those of you who study history, you will know that the Hebrew language itself was derived from Phoenician, and Phoenician was derived from Proto-Sinatic, and Proto-Sinatic was derived from Egyptian hieroglyphs. Frat says his inscriptions prove that the ancestors of the Egyptians, long before they passed to Africa and the Nile, had established an ancient South American empire ranging from what is now Bolivia to Bahia. So, while the treasure hunter is deeply engaged in trailing down caches of proto-Egyptian gold bars and ingots in South American jungles and foothills, he may, by chance, blunder on some enigmatical obelisk of unknown age carved with hieroglyphs and covered with multicolored drawings and imperishable pigments. Going into this book again, there's a lot of information in this book. This isn't proof of anything, but it's just showing the similarities between the Mayan hieroglyphs and that of the old alphabets of other old languages. And in this book, the author attempted to do the same thing by showing the similarities of Mayan hieroglyphs and Egyptian hieroglyphs. As we know, the Egyptians credited Thoth or Jehuti with inventing the alphabet or hieroglyphs. The inventor of writing in Phoenicia was named Tautus. Proto-Sinaitic is considered the earliest trace of alphabetic writing and the common ancestor of both ancient South Arabian script and the Phoenician alphabet. The writing systems that derived from it were Phoenician and Paleo-Hebrew. The Proto-Sinaitic script itself was derived from Egyptian hieroglyphic writing. And the Emerald Tablets. 
It said, go across the waters and take the arts ye have learned of. All right, we back in Atlantis to enter the Luvian world. It says, without Atlantis, how can we explain the fact that the early Egyptians were depicted by themselves as red men on their own monuments? And on the other hand, how can we account for the representation of Negroes on the monuments of Central America? Maybe I'm a little slow, but I'm sure he's making red men and Negroes seem a little synonymous. So we all know that the ancient Egyptians were so-called Negroid. Why would Negroes depict themselves as red men if they weren't one and the same? Dr. Le Plongeon says, besides the sculptures of long bearded men seen by the explorer at Chichen Itza, there were tall figures of people with small heads, thick lips, and curly short hair or wool regarded as Negroes. A lot of people like saying that the American Indian can't grow facial hair, but as you can see, he's seen many sculptures with beards. Now, I don't want anybody to take the words that I say or read in any book, even if I have proof, just take it and run with it. Do your own research so you can be 100% sure. I don't want you to be like, oh, I saw it on YouTube. I heard it from this guy on YouTube. No, I want you to know for sure. Not that you not that you just heard it from somewhere. So it's always best to do your own research, especially those who don't believe me.